Hello once again, this is Dr. Phil Fernandez, the President of the Institute of Biblical Defense and the Pastor of Trinity Bible Fellowship. I've got my uh, tech guy, my grandson, Nathan. Nathan, say hello to everybody. That's Nathan wearing Raider helmet. Good kid. Good kid. And uh, today I'm going to try to answer the question, what about those who never heard the gospel? What about those who never heard the gospel? Well, my understanding of the scriptures is that salvation is only through faith in Jesus. That if you don't trust in Jesus alone for salvation, you're not saved. Now, the possible exception for that would be um, people who die in infancy, little infants, who don't reach the age of accountability. Like King David's son was only seven days old, and he died, and David said, he can't come to me, but I can go to him someday. Um, and David said, surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So David knew he was going to heaven, but he knew he would see his son. And then also there, there's people that don't reach the, the they are mentally uh, disabled and they're, they're, uh, they, they don't, they're not able to know right from wrong and understand the gospel message. And I think they would be covered by Christ's sacrifice as well. Uh, Jacob Arminius had some interesting views um, on that, that Jesus' death on the cross covered uh, Adam's sin, which is credited to all mankind. And since they didn't know right from wrong, they didn't create, they didn't commit their own sins, even though they had a sin nature. They weren't, uh, didn't reach the uh, age of consciousness where they could act upon it. But I think the Bible is really, really clear that uh, those who do not believe, if they have the ability to, and they don't believe, that they remain lost. And so, what about those who've never heard the gospel? Well, Romans 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verses 18 to 22 basically tells us that even those who have not seen the invisible God, even though we haven't seen the invisible God, we've seen the visible work of his hands. So therefore, um, we know that he exists. We have no excuse for suppressing that truth, even though that's what we humans often do. We suppress the truth that God reveals to us. And so, uh, so uh, the invisible creator has revealed his existence to us through his creation. Uh, Romans chapter, uh, also by the way, Psalm 19, 1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul in, in Acts 14 and Acts 17 talks about God giving us rain and food and the different seasons and things of that sort um, uh, is evidence that God exists. And, uh, but whatever the case, so through creation, God makes his existence known to us. And then through our conscience, Romans chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, even the Gentiles, the pagans who don't have God's law written on tablets of stone or written in the Old Testament, they still have God's laws written on their hearts, their conscience is bearing witness when they're uh, disobeying God's law. So uh, all mankind, um, if they reach the age of accountability, they know that there is a God deep down inside. They could suppress that truth like atheists do. But deep down inside, they know that God exists, and they know uh, they have a conscience, and it's a guilty conscience because we've disobeyed this God. So we know there's a God, and we're not him, and we've uh, basically rebelled against him. And uh, so I believe that through the lesser lights of creation and conscience, you know, the Lord Jesus told us, in John chapter 12, 32 and 33, if I be lifted up from the earth, and John said he was talking about the way he was going to die, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto myself. So through the power of the Holy Spirit, John chapter 16, verses 7 to 11, the Holy Spirit is drawing all mankind to himself, to Jesus, uh, through the lesser lights of creation and conscience. And so if a person who's in a country that never heard the gospel uh, will answer to the lesser lights of creation and conscience and be, be say, hey, look, there is a God and I've rebelled against him and I need to be saved by him, then I think God will reveal the salvation message to him. And God usually does that. You know, he, lead, he led the wise men to a babe in a manger. He led Cornelius to Peter. Okay? He doesn't lead you to Buddha. He doesn't lead you to Muhammad. Okay? Uh, and so if anywhere on the globe you're seeking the one true God, the one true God will get the gospel message to you. And the normal way he does that is by sending a missionary. He puts it on the heart of a missionary. How, you, you, you know, those who are saved, they're saved by, you know, faith comes from hearing. And hearing by the word of Christ. But you can't hear 
unless somebody's proclaiming the word, unless there's a preacher, and the preachers don't go unless they're sent. And they're not sent unless God sends them. So, um, so usually it's a missionary, but sometimes God does use visions and dreams. We find, find out about many people in Islamic countries coming to Christ because they see Jesus in a vision or a dream. Um, but God's hands are not tied. The God we serve is the God who sits enthroned. He is all-powerful, and he's able to get the gospel message to all people in all nations. And, um, and so that's how I think God draws people. So what about those who've never heard? Anyone who would freely accept Christ, I believe God will give them the opportunity uh, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And so God's hands are not tied. He can get the gospel message to anyone who seeks him. Thank you, and God bless you.